Hello and welcome to my craft channel Susie Makes. Uh, this is part two of Bavarian Crochet and um, as you can see this is one I'm in the middle of making for myself at the moment. Today we completed this middle section. Now you may think well that doesn't actually look like this middle section because it's all squared off. That squaring off will come in future rows because the more rows you add and where you actually place your stitches <coughs> excuse me, is what actually gives you these squared or diamond shapes. So in the part one of how to do Bavarian crochet using UK terms um, we completed this and today, let's just move my one out of the way for a little while um, we are going to do the next two rows uh, which will actually be the rows that uh, are more or less repeated throughout the rest of your um, blanket, cushion, bag, whatever you decide to make with your Bavarian crochet. So, I've chosen my next colour. Even if you decide to do something all one colour in Bavarian crochet, you still uh, need to break off your yarn if, after every two rows. Uh, basically, it's two rows make up um, the vast majority of the pattern. Uh, apart from the foundation block that we were working on in part one. Um, but you still need to break your yarn off, even if you decide to do it all in one colour. Um, and every uh, after every two rows, um, because the first row is started in the chain one gaps that we did um, on the row below. Um, the second row is actually made in the top of the double treble clusters that you make in row one. Um, so the yarn, you could slip stitch it from here up to the first chain one gap, um, but uh, I think it looks uh, a bit tidier if you just break off the first yarn and, and join in the second one you want to use. And uh, I do think it looks uh, uh, personally beautiful in uh, a mix of your favourite colours. So I'll just uh, make my starting loop and you can start in, into any chain one space from the previous row. And chain one spaces, if you remember, are what sit between the four double treble stitches uh, you do in each um, shell, each corner shell. So you've got one there and you've got one there. I tend to stick to starting in the same place. Uh, so that's where I broke off my yarn before. So I'll start in the first chain one space after that, which is here. Now you start by slip stitching into that chain one space. And I do catch a bit of my yarn down as I go along to save too much sewing in at the end. And you start with a chain four, one, two, three, four. Now the next part of this stitch you haven't come across before. In fact, I won't catch the yarn down in this because it might just confuse the stitch. Uh, it's more important that you actually uh, understand the makeup of the stitch you're about to do. Now, we haven't covered this part of the stitch before, but um, part of your double trebles are going to be worked around each bar, we call each double treble we did in the previous row a bar, each bar of the previous row. Um, and we are working into the double treble clusters that sit on top of each shell. So remember we did 12 in each corner. So you did four there, a chain one, then four, a chain one, and then four down this side you're going to be working around these four at the top double treble clusters. Now this stitch is known as a back post double treble decrease, uh, which is a mouthful, but you, you will see why, because it, it involves, you're going to do a double treble, so you wrap your arm around your hook twice. Now you need to put your hook around the back of the post, that first double treble on the top there, 
until it comes through the other side, like so. Then you continue your double treble by putting your yarn around the hook and pulling it through that back post. So you've still got your four stitches as you do in at this stage of a double treble. You f finish off by putting your yarn around the hook and pulling it through the first two. And putting yarn around the hook again, pull it through the second two. Now as in the very first row we did, um, so that would be this row here. Remember we made these double treble clusters in the very first row. Um, you leave the last stitch of each double, double treble cluster on the hook along with the loop that sits on top of your, cha your very first chain four. So that's as far as you want to take that double treble cluster at the moment. Or double treble stitch I should say, that one is. Now you're going to do another one, so yarn round hook twice and uh, put your hook around the back of the next post so your hook comes towards you in the gap nearest the one you've just made and then round the next post and away from you through the gap next gap along so your hook is sitting in front of the next um, double treble and your double treble sits across the top at the back like so I'll show you that once more. So you yarn round your hook twice because you are making a double treble. The only difference is you're wrapping it around four double trebles made on the previous uh, row. So the hook comes through the chain one gap of the previous row towards you, in front of the next double treble of the previous row, and out the next gap like so. Then you finish your double treble by wrapping your yarn around the hook and catching that yarn through. Yarn around take off the first two, yarn around take off the second two. And there you've got, you don't complete the last bit, you leave them on the hook for now. Uh, there you've got two back post double trebles you've created. And it makes this pretty um, contrasting little stitch around the top of each double treble of the previous row. Uh, isn't that cute? So now we do another one. So yarn around your hook twice. Hook comes towards you uh, through the gap you finished off in previously. Around the next double treble and out the other side. The gap the other side of it. So you can see, now you finish that double treble off by pulling the yarn, putting your yarn around your hook, pulling it through, yarn round, pull through twice, um, pull through the first two stitches I should say, yarn round your hook, pull through the next two stitches, and you don't complete at the moment. So you now got uh, three double trebles. Uh, sitting on your hook along with your first chain four. You want to do it once more. Yarn around the hook twice uh, into the gap that you went uh, out of previously. To, so the hook part of your crochet hook comes towards you in front of the next double treble and out the other side. You see? So yarn round the hook, pull through. Yarn round the hook, pull through the first two stitches on your hook. Yarn round the hook, pull through the next two stitches on your hook. So there you have your four double trebles and your chain four that you started with. Now, as before, in row one, you're going to take your hook through all of those stitches. So yarn round and pull through all five of the stitches that are sitting on your hook back to just your working loop. So in order to finish off this double treble cluster, you now chain four. One, two, three, four. Just pull it 
cutting on the eye. And to secure it, you do a double crochet um, into the next chain one gap. Nice little double crochet sitting there that secures it. So you've got your chain four, your one, two, three, four double trebles that have been wrapped around each double treble that sits on the top of the shell that we made in the previous row and gives you this pretty uh, stitching that a bit like a running stitch, like so. And I just give it a little bit of a tug to make sure it all sits nicely and uh, looks nice and neat. And as before, in part one, the second chain four we did there, the very first chain, the chain, uh, so the, uh, the very first chain we did of the chain four does create this little hole on top of your double treble cluster. And that is, you will be working into this little gap um, for the second round. Or should I say the fourth one that we will be on by then. Right, so now we want to do exactly the same. We're actually going to pick up double, we're going to do another four double tre uh, trebles, wrapping the hook around each one of these double trebles of the previous row. But then, however, uh, we actually want eight double trebles altogether because this is a side panel. This, this is a corner and remains the corners. These are the corners and remain the corners throughout. But now you need to fill in this gap in order to get to the top of the next corner. So we're going to do exactly the same as we have just done. So a double treble starts with uh, winding the yarn around your hook twice. Then you come through the gap where you did your double crochet in front of the next double treble of the previous row and out the gap the other side of it. You put your yarn around your hook and pull through uh, oh no, you, you know what I forgot, I forgot the chain for. Let's do a, I can't rewind it, except, uh, I have to accept, I made a mistake there. We start with the chain four. One two, three, four. Now we start our double trebles as before. So again, bring your hook towards you through the gap that you did your double crocheting around the first double treble or the next double treble and out through the other side of that double treble of the previous row. Now you wrap your yarn around your hook and you pull through. Then finish your double treble, yarn around hook, pull through the first two stitches, yarn around hook, pull through the second two stitches. And you leave that final loop on the hook until you've completed four double trebles. So there's one, we'll do two more in the same way. So through the gap you went out of previously, around the next double treble of the previous row and out in the gap the other side. Complete your double treble by yarn round your hook and pull through. Then yarn round your hook, take off the first two stitches, yarn round your hook, take off the second two stitches. Now you have two double trebles sitting on your hook along with your chain four. Now we need two uh, more and then I'll show you the second half of this part. So, hook towards you through the gap you went out of previously, around the next double treble and out the gap the other side of it. Yarn round your hook and pull your yarn through, like so. Yarn round the hook, pull your yarn through the first two stitches. Yarn round your hook, pull your yarn through the second two stitches. There's number three. Let's just do one more. So, towards you, out the other side, away from you, yarn round your hook, pull through, let's just make that round again, got into a pin. Yarn round your hook twice, 
book towards you through the gap you went on out of previously, around your double treble, and out the gap the other side. Yarn round hook take off your first two, yarn round hook take through your second two. And there you have four double trebles sitting on your hook. However, remember at the beginning I said we actually want to do eight now. So, we're going to go around this one next. So we've gone across the top with our first double treble cluster here. And that is known as a four back post double treble decrease. Now this side one is going to be known as an eight back post double treble decrease. I'm going to write this pattern out in UK terms, by the way. Um, so if you subscribe to the channel, you, uh, you will automatically uh, get a copy of the UK terms for Bavarian crochet um, free once it's ready, which I want to have it ready within the next few days. So back to what we're doing. So we've done the first four. We want eight of these all together. So we, we sort of miss this. Let's move that yarn out there so it doesn't confuse things. We sort of miss this bit here and we're going to jump straight over to this. Um, and because this is such a big stitch, there's plenty of it there so you don't have to do any slip stitches to get from here to here. So you've done your four here, and we're going to go straight into this one and do another four along there. So yarn round your hook twice. And you find, be careful not to wrap it around the chain four that you did on the previous, uh, on the first row. The chain fours, you don't ever wrap your hook around or any yarn, they just stay there. They, they are part of the makeup of a double treble cluster. Alright, so you wrap your yarn around the hook twice. You find the first double treble on this side, that, so you put your hook through the gap coming towards you, around the first double treble stitch and out the other side of it, out the gap the other side I should say, and in exactly the same way, yarn round your hook take off the first two, yarn round the hook take off the second two. So see now you have got five double trebles sitting. We do another three, in the gap we came out of previously around the next double treble and out the gap the other side of it, yarn round, pull through. Then yarn round, pull through your first two stitches, yarn over, pull through your second two stitches. We've got six, two more, yarn round, hook twice. In, around and out, yarn round, pull through. Yarn round, pull through your first two stitches, yarn round, pull through your second two. There's a lot of stitches sitting there, but it does work, I promise you. So we do one more for this. Yarn round, pull through the first two, yarn round, pull through the second two. And there you now have eight double trebles sitting on your hook, uh, along with your very first chain four. Now you're going to put your yarn around the hook and pull through all eight stitches. Yikes, I hear you say. Now, if you're not uh, very confident at pulling it through initially, this is the first time you're trying this, um, you can, if you want to, just take it off two or three over at a time. As long as you only put your yarn round once, you can choose to take off um, two or three at a time and then the next three and then the, the next three if you want. Um, or if your stitches are not too tight, um, they're just right, I would say, you put your yarn round the hook and you take through All nine stitches that were sitting on your hook. How's that, eh? And you finish off this with a chain four. One, two, 
three, four. And you do a double crochet into the next chain one gap to secure it, to anchor it down. There. It's just a version of this one, but more stitches. So you've got your chain four, your eight double trebles, and your chain four. Just like you have here, but you've got your chain four, your four double trebles, and your chain four with a double crochet separating them or anchoring them down in between. And that's lovely. And these um, these little gaps are all part of making up the pattern. Now can you see what I was talking about earlier? Just to get those tails pushed to one side. Like these look like lovely little round petals, don't they? But the more you do, the more rows you add on to this, the row below starts to get squared off because you're working like this. And now we're going to do this corner one. So we're going to do another little one like this on this corner. These are now the side panels. And the more rows you do, the more of these you will be doing with every row. Right, so we start with a chain four. Not like I forgot one side. One two, three, four. Now we do four back post double trebles. So yarn round your hook twice. Through the gap where you did your double crochet, around the front of the double treble on the previous row, and out the gap the other side of it. Yarn round your hook and pull it through to form that stitch. Yarn round the hook to take off pull through the first two stitches, yarn round the hook and pull through the second two stitches. There. Your chain four and your first double treble of the next corner. So do three more. So there's two. That's three, and one more for this corner. And there, you've got your four double trebles for your second corner with your chain four at the beginning. So now you put your yarn around your hook and you pull your hook through all of those five stitches. You finish this corner off with a chain four, one. Let's pull some more yarn up. Two, three, four, and you anchor it down with a double crochet in the next chain one gap. And there you have your second corner. Now you're going to do another one of these for this side. So we start with a chain four. One, two, three, four. Incidentally, in some, uh, in quite a few in, anyway, American um, version patterns of this, they do a chain five. But I think I crochet quite loosely because I found chain four was plenty long enough, chain five looked a little too too long. But if you crochet tighter, you can do a chain five um, or even six if it looks better for you on your work. If you find it uh, is puckering in, in that area, it might be better to add another chain to see if it helps sort it out. Right, so now we want to do eight double trebles around the posts of the previous double trebles in round two. So I've put the yarn around my hook twice, Put the hook in the chain one gap where you did your double crochet around the next double treble, out through the gap the other side, yarn round, pull through, yarn round, pull through the first two stitches, yarn around, pull through the next two. And there you have your chain four and your first double treble. Now we need another seven. 
It does it feels like it won't even fit on the hook, but I promise you it does. Now, if you feel you've got the uh the hang of this, feel free to uh skip to the uh end, uh skip along a little bit. There is another row to this part, so uh, we will be completing a fourth row. But feel free if you want to skip along to the end of this row, row through. There's number four coming up. Yeah, now you've got the four, now we want four more. So we ignore uh, this little gappy bit and this double crochet in the middle and we go straight over to the next double treble. Again, be careful not to wrap your yarn around the chain fours of the first row. But only uh, put your hook around the double trebles you made of the previous row. So we've got four, here comes number five. So nice and slowly so you can see where it goes. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. And there you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight double trebles sitting on your hook and your first um, chain four. So you've got nine stitches on your hook altogether. Now I'm going to take it off the way I said it could be done easier if, if taking your yarn or your hook through all nine stitches seems a bit daunting. You can do it this way. You just uh, put your yarn around your hook once only and then pull your hook through the first three, take the next three and over that first stitch, and the last three and over that first stitch. And you see you have exactly the same effect, it's just not so daunting taking your hook through nine stitches in one go. So we chain four to finish, one, two, three, four, which finishes this particular cluster into the uh, next chain one space which is right next to the uh, little stitch that was wrapped around that last double treble and there you've completed a second side panel as I say don't be afraid to pull it about a bit just so that it all sits nicely. And there, done a corner, side panel, second corner, a second side panel. Now we're going to do a third corner. I'll just uh, work my way through now because I think you've got the gist of it. Um, I'll try not to go too fast in case you would like to just try and follow along with me. Oops. Butterfingers. So that's my chain four. And here we go. Not that I'm a fast crocheter anyway, I have to say I'm not. I'm quite slow by uh, normal standards. I think it's to do with the way I feel most comfortable holding the hook and the arm. Um, most people these days do the uh, crochet with the using the continental method but this is the old-fashioned um, English method. Um, I never got on with uh, the continental method and I'm quite happy doing it this way even though it does mean it's uh, a bit slower. Nice thing about crochet is um, also that if you make a mistake it's nice and quick to, to rectify 
uh, unlike uh, knitting, which can take, uh, uh, it's a bit of a chore correcting mistakes in knitting. Although I still love knitting, I have to say, I do love it. Um, there we have the next corner for double trebles work to give you a chain four um, on there as well. So now you do put your yarn around your hook and pull through those five stitches. So you've just got your working chain back on your hook, back to the beginning. And then to complete your chain one, two, three, four, and you double crochet into the next chain one space to anchor it down. And there you've got your third corner. And isn't this uh, pretty, these little stitches it forms? all the way around by working into those um, double treble crochets. Now we're going to do the third side panel. So we start with a chain four, one, two, three, four, and off we go again. Another eight we're picking up for the side panel, remember? To be tape work out of like that. Uh, start up again. It's the trouble when we do long videos, you have to accept sometimes if we make mistakes. Um, but uh, it's also handy to see <laughs> because. Um, it can feel a little like uh, a disaster, but I promise it isn't. They're usually easily rectified mistakes made in Photoshop. So that's three, so this is number four. Just unwinding some yarn, so you will excuse me, the microphone's going for a wander. Yeah, I hope that's better. Uh, so number five will be over here as before. Number six, number seven, and number eight. So there you have eight double trebles sitting on your hook along with your chain four loop as well. So now we uh, wrap your yarn around the hook just the once and pull through all nine stitches and we finish it off with a chain four. One, two, three, four, and we anchor that down by a double crochet into the next chain one gap. And we start the next one with a chain four. One, two, three, four, and off we go into the fourth corner, just tug those a little bit to make them sit nice and neatly. See how that is forming now, the next row? So we'll do the fourth corner. You know some of the um, earliest, I don't know uh, how many of you I've ever done a granny stripe blanket as was made very popular by uh, Lucy on the uh, Attic 24 blog. Um, but you know one of the er earliest um, records of the granny stripe was actually done by Queen Victoria who made some nice long scarves that were sent to um, 
the soldiers um, in the front line of, uh, I believe it was the Boer War, um, to keep them nice and warm as they uh, could get very cold. And uh, they used to be draped across their shoulders, wrapped across the front and tucked into their belts at the back. And uh, how comforting that must have been so far away from home. And Queen Victoria um, made that, uh, contributed some of her uh, crochet to the soldiers on that front line. And there is a picture on the internet uh, of these scarves that she used to make as well. There we have just completed the fourth corner. And now we're going to complete the fourth side panel. And sew those ends in at the end. So now we want eight double trebles for this fourth side panel. Oh no, done it again, forgot the chain for. Just testing, make sure you're awake. Well, it can be a bit like watching paint dry once you get, you get the hang of it. Uh, but bear with me, we're almost there and we'll be on the fourth row. So there's one. Two, three, four. Now when you come to your fourth side, make sure the tail from the previous row is on the back of the work so as not to confuse anything. And we'll go across, wrap it around the fifth bar. Number seven. And number eight. So there we have the eight double trebles sitting on the hook with the chain four at the beginning. So you have nine stitches. At the end of the side panel, wrap the yarn round the hook once and take your hook. I'm sure. Yeah, didn't quite work out. There you go. Through all of those stitches. And you go one, two, three, four. Now, we've already got a double crochet there, so we don't want another one. In fact, I've actually done that quite loose. I don't have a huge hole there, so I'm just going to undo that and pull the arm a bit tighter. One, two, three, four. That's probably not a bad tip. The very first chain of your second chain four, when you are completing these clusters, try and make quite secure. If it's too loose, you're going to have big holes in the middle of uh, your uh, shells. Now, where we've ended with the double crochet to anchor it down on all the others, this is the end of the row, so we don't want another one. Uh, well, what I do is a slip stitch into the double, first double crochet we did right at the beginning of this row. So I'll go through both bars of that double crochet. And I just slip stitch it. So you yarn around the hook, take it through, take the back stitch off over that, and there. You have completed row three. Well done, you. So there. 
Now we're going to start row 4, which adds the tops of these shells all the way around. And then basically you repeat rows 3 and 4 um, until uh, whatever you're making, if it's a blanket, is the size you want it. Now there are slight variations on this stitch. For instance, you can do rectangles um, so by making a small line of Bavarian crochet stitches and then you work your way around that rectangle. Um, but I just think this is probably the easiest one to start with. So now, if you remember in part one, we did a chain two to get from here, the height we needed to get from here, up to the gap that sits. Remember I said the very first chain one of your second chain four, or well, the very first chain of your second chain four, uh, created this little hole, or this little gap that sits on top of where you... Uh, crocheted all those double trebles together well, we're going to be working in that gap there so to get from here to that gap there we did a chain two on the first uh, on the second row but you don't need quite such uh, so much height in future rows don't really know why so um, what I'll do is a chain one and then you carry on doing double trebles but the, so we go into that gap that I showed you that sits on top of the double treble cluster of the previous row and we make a double treble. Now this time we see it through. We don't have all the stitches sitting on the hook. So there, there's your chain one for the height, and there's your first double treble. Now we want 12 as before, um, in three sets of four. So four, chain one, four, chain one, four. Four double trebles. So that's two, three, four, and a chain one. The chain ones are needed to work into in future rows. Into the same hole that we've been working, we do another four double trebles. One, two, and as I said, um, I believe in the first video it was, you don't even have to do borders with this stitch, um, because uh, if you finished after uh, you've completed a second row, so as I said this pattern is made up of two rows after the uh, foundation block. See there's your second lot. We'll do another chain one here and then another four. Um, yeah, after your foundation block the rest of it is just made up of two rows and if you finish at the end of a second row, um, say if you're making a blanket, then you have a beautiful edging already there. Well, here we are, it's one more. There, and remember we started off with a chain one um, at the beginning, so to keep it symmetrical we end with a chain one once we've done our 12 double trebles and two chain one spaces in between. And then we do a double crochet some people do it in the top of the double crochet of the previous row, or I actually put my hook through the actual two bars of the double crochet, front and coming out the back, 
and then you do another double crochet there and you have finished this is actually referred to as a large shell this uh, part of the second row so we have completed a large shell in the first corner of the, I keep calling it the second row, it's because the pattern's largely made up of two rows. This is actually the fourth row altogether. Um, so now we're going to do a shell on top of the side panel and um, it only has eight stitches in this shell um, as opposed to the twelve in the corner ones. So this is referred to as a small shell. So we now need to do a small shell into the gap which is there um, of the next side panel. Excuse me. Gradually slipping off my chair. If you hear a thump you know I fell off. Um, so here we are. Sometimes I get so carried away I don't really think about uh, anything else. Um, posture or anything or the fact that my throat's a bit sore and I should have brought some water with me but there you go right so now we do a small shell in the top of the first side panel and the small shell is made up of eight double trebles separated by a chain one in the middle so we do uh, four double trebles into that gap that I showed to be referred to before now these gaps I've probably made slightly more loose, which uh, I didn't exactly mean to do, but it will help in uh, letting you see clearly on video um, where about your hook's supposed to be. And unlike the uh, first row of the two row pattern, uh, you take these stitches right through uh, to the end and not leave them all on the hook as you did before. Yeah. So there we've got two. Three. Four. Now remember I said two lots of four separated by a chain one, so we do a chain one and we do another four into exactly the same hole. One, two, let's get some more yarn unwound. Three, four. Now we started with a chain one, so we end with a chain one, and we do a double crochet into the double crochet of the previous row. So I separate the bars, put my hook through front and back and we do a double crochet. UK term, remember. All this is UK terms. There's plenty out there in USA terms. And there you have an eight bar small shell for your first side panel. So you've completed the shell on the um, first corner, the, that's the large shell, the small shell on the first side panel. Now we're going to do another large shell on the second corner. Um, you know, if you've got the hang of it, then uh, feel free to skip through to the end of the row. So we chain one. Or just work along with me. Let's go into the gap. Let's the hole that sits on top of that uh, double treble cluster of the previous row and we do one two three 
three. Four. Now remember, when we do twelve, we need a ch uh, well do any of these um, large or small shells. You need four double trebles separated by single chains in between. So you chain one and do the next four into the same hole. One. Two. Three, four. I'm doing this in chunky yarn so that it's easier to pick up on camera. So that's your second lot of four. Now you need another chain one. into the same hole you do your final four double trebles of this large shell there's number three and there's four and we chain one because that's what we started this shell with and we do a double crochet into the double crochet of the row before keeps everything nice and neat I do sometimes need a little bit of adjusting just to make them sit nicely. Um, and that's probably just me being extra fussy. So there you have your second large shell on your second corner. Now we're going to do, I'm going to do uh, the rest of it now without keep stopping and showing you over and over again. So I'm going to work my way round to the end and I'll just show you how to finish off. Um, I, hope, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, it's a lovely uh, stitch to learn. This is this this pattern. And um, like I said, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, um, not only will you find out uh, future videos that will be coming out in a variety of crafts, and not just crochet, um, you will also uh, receive a free copy of the. Bavarian crochet pattern in UK terminology. And that free pattern will be for your use only. Some more yarn. Now, sometimes when I'm crocheting, I do a bit of daydreaming. I was uh, always very good at daydreaming. In fact, if I could have got a degree in daydreaming, I think I'd have passed flying colours. Um, I've uh, always been a terrible daydreamer. I was always the one sitting in the school classroom, staring out of the window, uh, almost trance-like. And teacher calling my name several times before uh, I snapped out of it. Um, but uh, of course, crocheting gives me the opportunity to daydream as much as I like. And I often daydream of, oh, wouldn't it be good if we uh, had um, regular little craft uh, breaks? Um, like it could just be one or two nights in a nice hotel, a group of like-minded people who love to craft, like crochet for instance, or the old-fashioned pyjama party, um, 
like we used to have when we were kids, but maybe this time with a bit of wine thrown in with the cake or the biscuits. Um, wouldn't it be great? And we'd just sit there loving our craft and chatting with like-minded people. And I often think I might actually get around to organising it one day. Um, be interested to know if other people would be uh, interested in that, if it could be organised. Somewhere maybe near the beach so that we could, uh, you can get out and enjoy the fresh air as well, with our crochet of course. Um, but anyway, that's me rambling on, getting carried away, but uh, that is my little daydream now and then. I love being with like-minded people, and I do think people who love crafting are the best people in the world, the kindest people as well. That's my opinion anyway. I know, um, I don't know if any of you have ever been to Yarndale. Uh, relatively new. I think it's been going three years now. Yarn Festival. Um, partly organised by Lucy of Attic 24, as I've mentioned her a couple of times already. Um, fantastic yarn show in um, Yorkshire. I think it's North Yorkshire. Skipton in Yorkshire anyway. And... Um, the most amazing yarn show held in a um oh what do they call them now you know where they send their cattle to market um in this big build barn like building but uh held in one of those and it is absolutely fantastic and set amongst the most stunning scenery um and i know the last time i went i wasn't able to go last year because i broke my leg absolutely horrified because my um my birthday's in the summer so my son tends to um that's that's my birthday present my trip to Yarndale every year so I can stock up on lovely goodies and I get to stay over a couple of nights as well in the local hotel um uh usually go on my own but uh you don't feel alone not when you're with all those hundreds of, of different crafters under one roof. Uh, you feel all part of the same family. But uh, it is. I don't know if any of you uh, have ever intended to go or would like to go, but I would highly recommend it, Yarndale. Uh, and I do not gain in any way from saying that. I'm just saying it is a fantastic yarn festival. And you get to... Uh, opportunity to sit knit and crochet uh, there's uh, lovely food available and uh, it you it is just a fantastic weekend out and the effort um, that they go into in organizing it is second to none. It's absolutely remarkable. And uh, the ticket tickets compared to many big um, sewing, uh, knitting, crafting uh, events are actually very reasonably priced. And lots of workshops. There's loads of workshops. The place is decorated in all sorts of knitting and crochet uh, decorations that have been made from people all over the world. I know one year uh, we were all asked to uh, crochet a, a, a mandala uh, for Yarndale and they were received from all over the world and they made the most stunning display. I think the first year it was uh, crocheted bunting absolutely stunning as you went into uh, Yarndale the bunting was draped um, there, there, there was a tall roof and it was draped across this roof in an arch as you went in and uh, it, it really did make you feel special to be there and be part of it um, I really hope to be able to go again this year unfortunately my uh, my foot hasn't healed properly even now. Did it last June? Even now hasn't healed, healed properly and I'm still hobbling around with a, a walking stick. 
that uh, here we go uh, on the last on the last lap of this. I don't know if any of you watch the craft channels on um, preview, the create and craft, Hochanda. Um, but I love it when they do knitting and crochet programs. Not nearly enough as I'd like to see. I do appreciate paper crafting is probably one of the biggest uh, crafts in this country right now. Um, but I have to say I love the crochet and knitting programs and I love the sewing programs. Um, I'm not a machinist by any stretch of the imagination. I uh, tend to be a bit scared of them if I'm honest. Um, but I do love hand sewing. Um, so I do love uh, watching the sewing programs as well. And some of those patchwork quilts that are produced by the experts uh, are jaw dropping. I just think, oh, never in a million years would I could I produce something like that. But I do like patchwork and quilting. But in my own version, I like doing it by hand, and I do like the the, the simplest forms of it as well. Uh, not too complicated. Um, I like a, a, a handmade or patchwork quilt to look as though it's uh, been lovingly handmade by uh, by someone with a with a lot of love gone into it. Which I'm sure I'm not saying isn't the case with sewing machines, but uh, we all have our own preferences. And um, one of the things about being a, a, a crafter and someone who works a lot with yarn, I, I have a, a cat who's nearly eight years old and her name is Lily Bell. And for the, the first seven years of her life, she didn't really take much notice of the fact that she was uh, a cat uh, amongst all this yarn. And um, she really, apart from when she was very young, and she had the uh, a couple of moments where she dived into a bag of yarn and stole a ball of pure wool and ran off with it. Um, she really, uh, I think it was just part of her life, so much a part of her life, she didn't actually uh, take much notice of it. And then all of a sudden last year, it was as though she, it just suddenly the penny dropped. Oh, I'm a cat. And uh, I'm supposed to uh, like yarn and, and to play with it. Um, didn't do a chain one there, did I? Uh, and now it's difficult to sit down and do some crochet <laughs> when she's around because she just goes after my yarn like there's no tomorrow. Uh, Concentrate, Sue, concentrate. Um, and she sits there at the moment, as I say, I'm making myself a Bavarian crochet blanket and I'm using 400 gram balls of Aran yarn. And so there's a lot of different colours. So they're in a little box sitting uh, by the chair where I sit and crochet. And... Uh, she hides behind this box, waits for me to pick up my crochet to start uh, crocheting, and then she comes out and pounces on the yarn. And she just every time she sees the yarn move, she pounces on it again, uh, over and over again, and it becomes a game because I then get a cushion to pat her to get her to get get off of my yarn so I can crochet, and she races off. And then she comes skulking back, thinking I can't see her, hides behind the box again, and uh, and does it, and and we start all over again. All of a sudden, she pounces on my arm, and I can't uh, move or crochet uh, while while she's pounced on it, and uh, she absolutely thinks it's the best fun ever. Now. 
actually on the last four double trebles. Excuse my waffling on there. That uh, does make the time pass a little bit, I guess. Well, one of my most favourite places in the UK is Beachy Head near Eastbourne on the south coast. And uh, I, my son normally and daughter normally take me there uh, for my birthday every summer and I sit there with the most spectacular view. Uh, I'll sit on top of Beachy Head with the most spectacular view um, of the sea in front of us. And we have lunch there and we just sit and relax and it's usually because my birthday is in July it's usually a pretty beautiful sunny day and uh, it is a fantastic day and I take my crochet with me and I'm in heaven right here we are I've just completed the last side shell and we're back to the beginning and I don't need to anchor this with another double crochet I just do a slip stitch as, as we're at the end of that row snip our yarn pull it through the loop there how clever are we eh what do you think well done you if you followed along with this or plan to uh, later but now you can see that you have got your large shells sitting on top of the corner and just small shells sitting on top of the side panels and that is what you do for the rest of your blanket or whatever it is you're making now can you see how these are squaring off and you've got these lovely round petals uh, edging it but the more rows you add so these will then square off uh, the more rows you add but when you come to have and put your last row on you will have this beautiful edging all the way around now um, I've used these colors and chunky yarn with a thick hook so that it would show up beautifully or as near to beautifully as possible on camera and uh, I must admit I quite like them so I might continue with that see what I come up with I've got a few more balls of chunky yarn there um, so I hope you have enjoyed your uh, tutor tu tutorial on Bavarian crochet and uh, please do join me again soon all you do now is just keep doing those two rows that you've just learned in this vid this part two of the Bavarian crochet video you just keep doing them now um, now you, you, you would uh, put another colour on start in the chain one space as you did at the beginning of this video and do it again the only difference will be where you only did one side panel on this row the bigger it gets the more side uh, small shells you need to do so on the next row you will do two with a corner and two with a corner all the way around see and then the one after that you're just adding side uh, shells small shells with every two rows you do uh, so well done if you followed along to this it's been lovely doing this video I thoroughly enjoyed it because it's one of my favorite patterns and uh, I hope you will stop by again soon bye for now